Hello, and welcome to this hopefully brief overview of my Curve Extender HDA tool, which is available for free at the Gumroad link below. Uh, this thing started out as a very straightforward curve extension tool. It just extended the ends of any open curve that you plugged into it, and that was it. But over time, I started adding more and more functionalities to it, and it's uh, it's gotten pretty extensive and probably overwhelming if you uh, if you throw it into your scene and you're not quite sure what all the parameters do. So I figured it was uh, it was a good time to do a little video explain what all the parameters do and show you a few simple use cases for it. And then you can take it from there. First things first, uh, make sure that any curve that you plug into the extender is actually a polygonal curve because not all curves are by default. For example, if you do a curve Bezier and draw it out. Now you can tell that this isn't polygonal. By the way, these points are floating in space. So these are your Bezier handles. If you don't have point display on, you might think that this is a, a regular polygonal curve, but it's not. So keep that in mind. You can still use this curve. All you have to do is convert it first. And then you can resample, subdivide, do whatever you want. And it will work fine. I'll start with a very simple example instead. This semicircle here. When you drop your curve extender, initially nothing happens because we haven't set any parameters yet. So, first thing you see here is the symmetrize button. I'll go over that in a second. And the main thing here is the start extension. So, as soon as you start cranking this up, you'll see it starts extending the curve from the start point. Same goes for the end extension. And the way it extends this is not by a length, but by segments. So, it takes the existing segment length of your start and end points and uses that to extend the curve. So you'll see that if I resample before the extension, it automatically updates to reflect the new segment length. So one thing to keep in mind. Next up, I'll just show the symmetrize button right away. So Say you're setting this up, you want the same parameters for the uh, end. You don't have to go in here, copy paste these values over. You can just hit symmetrize and now they will extend together. So as you can see by default, it extends your curve in a straight line, which sometimes is what you want. Sometimes it's not what you want because you might want to maintain this tangent that you had in the original curve. And that's where the interpolation slider comes in. So you'll see that as I start moving this, it takes the existing tangent and applies that to the points and adds a multiplier, which is basically what this is. So by default, this is set to 0 0.5. And you'll see that the closer I get to 0, the more I get the original tangent. So we can close this circle if we add two, three more segments. Makes sense because the original semicircle was 12 segments. So you add another 12 with an interpolation of zero, and now your circle is closed. So that is the interpolation. And this also works with symmetrize. So now they're interpolating together. Uh, next up is rotation, which is pretty straightforward. It just rotates the extended part around the root. Again, works with symmetrize as well. Okay, so next up is the force interpolation button here. Where this might come in handy is if you have a straight line, for example, and you're extending it as you would, no problem. But now you want to have that same effect that we had on the semicircle where you're able to curl the extended part. So you start pulling on the interpolation and nothing happens. This is to be expected because the tangent of this curve is identical for each point. So there's nothing to interpolate between. It's always going to be a straight line. So a little hack for this is the force interpolate button. As you can see, now our slider works all of a sudden. Really, this should be called fake interpolation and not force interpolation because uh, this is kin effects under the hood. So it, it, again, it's a hack, but it makes life easier when you need this functionality. Uh, you'll see that when I turn it on, I also get this ramp here. And you can use this to dial in the fall off effect on the curl. 
make sure you don't add any additional points here or it's it might get confused and additional points will not do anything for the fall off so if you do something gets messed up just reset this to linear this will also work with symmetry but make sure you turn on forced interpolation for the end extension first and then turn on symmetry and now you have the exact same thing while i'm on the subject of tangents that don't work i'll just go back to the semicircle real quick and show you an issue that you might run into so we're doing our extension interpolation all good but what if i resample this thing too finely well now all of a sudden my interpolation isn't working anymore that's because the extender looks at the difference in the tangent between the last or first two segments as such, it runs into the same issue that it does with the line, where basically these tangents are identical to each other and there's no interpolation to be had. So if this is something you require, don't resample it too finely. Just do your extension first, however you want it, and resample afterwards. Flip start direction, pretty self-explanatory, I imagine. It just extends the curve in the other direction instead of going this way we're going that way or like this pretty straightforward same goes for the end in case that's what you need next up we have using existing normals as a tangent so by default the curve extender will calculate its own normals so if your curve doesn't have any normals well now it does because it needs to calculate a tangent in order to function but what if you have your own custom normals on your curve that you would like it to use and you don't want to use these new tangents that are calculated on the fly so just as an example i've set this up here maybe this is your curve and by default this would be the tangent that's calculated by the curve extender but maybe you don't want this you want to use these so we can just extend as we normally would and then just hit use existing normals as target. Now you can see it's going the other way for the start points. Just hit flip start direction and turn on use existing normals for the end as well. And there you go. Now it's following the original normals of the curve. And you can also tell it to average out the normals of the entire curve, which in most cases will give you a result that it's probably not what you want but in case you ever need to use the average normal of the entire curve rather than the ends here's the button for that i have never used it but it's there just in case next up we have our attributes we can create a start mask which i will visualize for you so this just masks the start extension from zero to one we can do the same for the end mask and we can normalize the resulting mask so it uh, is normalized across the entire curve and not just the extensions. Additionally, we can output a step attribute. It's adding a number to each uh, point on the extended part denoting uh, its place in the hierarchy. So your extensions will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the start extension and they will go negative one, two, three, four, five on the ends. Next up, we have the construction tab and you'll see that by default, three of these are on because I assume that for most use cases, you'll probably want this anyway. The first one is unifying the primitives. So you have your initial curve and the curve extender basically adds two primitives to it. So you end up with three prims, but I 99% of cases, you're gonna want this to be a single prim. So this unifies them. Uh, if you don't want that, you can turn this off. And now you see we have three prims here, or if we drop an exploded view. You'll see that they've become disconnected. So connected, disconnected. All right, uh, recalculate normals. This goes back to the uh, tangent part that I spoke about a minute ago. It automatically calculates a tangent normal for your new curve. If you don't want a new normal, or if you don't want a normal at all, just turn it off. It won't recalculate. If you want the tangent, but you want to reverse it, you can do that. And then we have sort by vertex order, uh, which I'll turn off for a second, just so you can see the mess that you end up with. If you don't do this, original curve ran from zero to 12, and then it goes 22 up to 30, and it goes 13 to 21 over here. 
I don't think anybody wants this. So sort by vertex order is on by default. So it always stays uh, nice and incremental. You can also reverse this. Again, if you don't want this for some insane reason, just turn it off. And then we have colorized segments. This will just show you real quick where your extensions are. Obviously, if the brims are unified, it's just going to be one segment. But if you turn this off now, you can see there's your start, there's the original curve, and there's the end. Trim to intersection. You'll see this is grayed out. If your unified primitives is off, make sure that's on or this will not work. So where this comes in handy is, say you have a curve that is overlapping like this, and you want to trim these ends off, just hit that and now they're gone. Additionally, you can fill this shape and this will also get rid of the curve so you're not left with any redundant primitives. And this is just an end gone, so if you, uh, if you make some very wacky shapes, I don't know, you add rotation, it's gonna, yeah, your normals are gonna get a little ugly, but shape seems to be maintained fine in these cases. So that's trim to intersection. You can increase the tolerance if the um, if the curves aren't quite overlapping, but they're close enough, it will act like a pseudo fuse, but only on the ends. So uh, you can increase that if necessary. Most times it's better to just have them intersect and not mess with this. Additionally, you'll want to make sure that when you're trimming that there's only one intersection here. If you really overdo this and you have, I don't know, a million intersections here, this is not going to work. One intersection only, please. Next up, we have our groups tab, which I assume is pretty self-explanatory, but I will show it anyway, just to prove to you that it works. We can output an extension group for the start, an extension group for the end. Now we have two separate groups here. If we want this to be one group containing all of the extensions, you can merge it here. And the same goes for the last point on the start, last point on the end and you can merge those into one group as well. So maybe you have a straight extension here. So this is at zero, uh, 0 0.5 is what I meant, sorry. And, oh, I don't know, maybe you're doing uh, another curve extension, extending some more, and maybe this is gonna curl in like this. All right, so maybe this is your final shape. But now we have a ton of points here that we don't really need to maintain this shape. and. If you're trying to keep things nice and light for performance's sake, that's where the cleanup might come in handy. So if you turn on delete inline points, it's going to get rid of all the points that are not necessary to maintain the shape. Again, you have a tolerance slider here. If you, uh, you want to optimize things or destroy your curve, then that's what that's for. But let's keep that low. Uh, next up is delete input curve. So in case you only want to keep uh, the extended parts, you can delete the original, sorry, delete the original curve here. And then the last one is deleting the prims. So that will leave you with just the points. And that's that, I guess. So one last thing I'll mention, I've been working on very simple single curves here. This is also going to work on uh, on any number of curves, really. So. Obviously, you'll get some slowdown, but it is a compiled HDA, so that should help with the speed. And there you go. So you can extend uh, any number of curves at the same time, in theory, and do the uh, interpolation on all of them as well. So yeah, as you can see, it's experiencing some slowdown, but still manageable. So yeah, any number of curves, this will work fine. And uh, yeah, last but not least, this isn't black boxed. So if you want to see how this thing works, you can just right click, allow editing of contents and jump in. Um, the start extension happens on the left here. The start extension happens on the right. This is the loop for the extension, basically. And then you, have, you just have a ton of switches to account for all the functionality that's happening in here. So yeah, if you're, uh, if you're a nerd and you want to see what's going on then by all means all right guys i hope this uh was useful i hope you find a use for this tool yourself and if you run into any bugs or uh, strange issues or if anything is unclear let me know in the comments all right see you next time thanks